dear students welcome to another session of my lecture series on first semester engineering mathematics course calculus and linear algebra particularly module 5 of calculus and linear algebra in the previous class we recollected some of the definitions required for this particular chapter and in continuation to that let me define the rank of a matrix rank of a matrix is defined through minors of a matrix so first let me define what is a minor of a matrix minor of a matrix minor of a matrix You select R rows and R columns of any given matrix for a determinant that will become a minor of that matrix A. So the, like that, you can choose uh, <coughs> different rows and different columns and form determinants, thereby forming minors of the matrix. So clearly, obviously, there can be a number of different minors of the same order so let me define this determinant minor of matrix is determinant 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 of any r rows of any r rows and all columns are columns selected from any matrix a selected from any matrix a is called by the name is called the minor of the matrix okay. of order and of order R and of order R. So clearly there will be clearly there will be a number of different minors of the same order. Clearly, there will be a number of different minors of the same order, of the same order. So let me give an example for this. Example. Example. Consider a matrix A with elements 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 5, 1, 2, 3, 5, 1, 2, 3. So there are three rows and four columns. The order of the matrix is 3 by 4. So that can be denoted. Yeah. <coughs> three rows and four columns. Now you select R rows and R columns. Say for example, two rows and two columns. First row, second row. First column, second column. And a form a determinant with elements 1, 2, 2, 1. Is a 2 by 2 minor of A. Or a minor of A. Of order 2. Similarly, the first row you correct 3, 4, 0, 1. First row, second row, third column, fourth column. First row, second row, third column, fourth column. That means 3, 4, 0, 1. If I have a determinant, that will become another minor of A, which is of order 2 again 0, 1. For example, 
जो सेलेक्ट सेकेंड रॉक थर्ड रॉक सेकेंड कारा थर्ड कारा दैन यू विल हैव एलिमेंट वन जीरो वन टू इज अगेन ए माइनर ऑफ ऑर्डर टू ऑफ आर माइनर्स तो आप यू कैन सेलेक्ट मेरी माइनर्स ऑफ ऑर्डर टू ए आर द माइनर्स ऑफ ऑर्डर टू माइनर्स
greater than r r greater than r equal to r plus 1 right should vanish vanishes and every minor every minor of order greater than r greater than greater than r vanishes greater than r vanishes that means becomes zero the value of the determinant is zero or vanishes so rank is symbolically written as rank of a matrix c a rank of matrix of the matrix a is symbolically written as written as a row of the row of e so some of the consequences of this definition rank of a matrix is as follows if a matrix a as a non zero minor of order r then the rank of a is always greater than or equal to r that's the first result you can notice If a matrix A, matrix A has a non-zero minor, has a non-zero minor of order R. If a matrix A has a non-zero minor of order r then rank of a will be always greater than or equal to r then then rank of a is always greater than or equal to r if a happens to be a null matrix then the rank of a of a null matrix is zero the second concept If A is a null matrix, if A is a null matrix, null matrix, that means all the entries of A are zero. Then, then rank of A is equal to zero. If A is not a null matrix. That means at least one entry. If one entry is not equal to zero, at least one entry, then the matrix A is called a non-zero matrix or non-null matrix or not a null matrix. Then its rank will be always greater than or greater than or equal to one. If A is not a null matrix, A A is not a null matrix. Then, then rank of A is greater than or equal to one. If A is a non-singular matrix, that means determinant of A not equal to zero, then the rank of that matrix is equal to Order of that square matrix. If A, if A, is a non-singular matrix, is a non-singular matrix of order R, non-singular matrix. If A is a non-singular matrix. matrix of order r then non singular matrix a is non singular matrix means determinant of a not equal to 0 determinant of a not equal to 0 so then then 
rank of A is equal to R. Is equal to R. Okay. Fifth one. If A is an Empire matrix, that means number of rows is not equal to number of columns, a rectangular matrix, then the rank of A is less than or equal to minimum of M and N. If A, if A is an M by N matrix, M by N matrix, then then rank of A rank of A is less than or equal to minimum of M and N. Minimum of minimum of M and N. Now let me define, uh, <coughs> we actually find rank of a matrix not by the definition what I understood, you know, this is only for the sake of definition. So we determine the rank by reducing it to echelon forum. After reducing it to echelon forum, we count the number of non-zero rows and determine the rank. So rank of a matrix A is practically equal to the number of non-zero rows in the echelon forum of the matrix. <coughs> so, to reduce the echelon forum, we need to uh, <coughs> understand the elementary transformation of a matrix. So, echelon forum, to reduce it to echelon forum, we need to sequence, uh, sequentially apply the elementary transformation of a matrix. There are six operations, three for rows and three for columns. So, in this chapter, we consider only the row transformations. So, we list only the row elementary transformations. <coughs> row elementary Additions or 
subtraction of any non <coughs> non zero multiple of the elements non zero multiple of the elements of any row of any row to the corresponding elements of any other row any row to the corresponding corresponding elements corresponding elements of any other row so these are the three row element transformation <coughs> it clearly says we are allowed to interchange any two rows row 1 can be interchanged with row 2 row 2 we can be interchanged with row 4 or row 5 like that we can multiply row 1 or row 2 or row n in general by a non zero number after multiplying <coughs> the resulting elements can be added or subtracted with the corresponding elements of any other row or a column so these three are allowed so using these three we have to Use the given matrix to echelon for row in order to de <coughs> determine the rank of a matrix. <coughs> the next definition: equivalent matrix. Equivalent. A and B are said to be equivalent if one can be obtained from the other using these row elementary transformations. Okay. Two matrices, two matrices A and B <coughs> are said to be equivalent. Are said to be. Equivalent set to be equivalent set to be equivalent. If one can be obtained, if one can be obtained from the other, obtained from. The other by a sequence of elementary transformations. <coughs> by a sequence, a sequence of elementary transformations. <coughs> elementary transformations. A and B are said to be equivalent if one can be obtained from the other by a sequence of elementary transformations. Okay. <coughs> Two equivalent matrices. They preserve the same order and the rank. Rank is unique; it will not change. <coughs> Two equivalent matrices. Equivalent matrices. Preserve, preserve the same order and rank. Preserve, preserve the same order, same order and rank. <coughs> and rank. Rank will not change. Order will not change. And yet, at any point of time, we can obtain one from the other by sequence of <coughs> elementary transformations. The symbol, the symbol tilde, this is called tilde, 
is used for the equivalence. Is used for equivalence. The symbol theta is used for equivalence. Now let me define a clan for which is a very important definition.
The third property is all the entries in a column below a heading entry. All the entries <coughs> in a column in a column in a column below in a column below the leading entry below a leading below a leading entry entry r zeros r zeros <coughs> okay so any matrix having this property three properties is called echelon form <coughs> once the matrix is reduced to echelon form then we count the number of non zero rows in the echelon form that will be the rank of the matrix so we determine the rank of a matrix not through minors but by the by reducing the matrix into its echelon form and counting the number of non zero rows that will that happens to be the rank of that particular matrix <coughs> so example so how to analyze this one so example examples so matrix a are simply the matrix with entries let us say 2 minus 3 1 4 Zero, one, two, three, zero, zero. Five. So this is this matrix is in alpha. So leading entry <coughs> below the leading entry in a column, all the elements are zero. The next leading entry to the right of the leading entry in the previous the above it. That is second property. Each leading entry of a row is in a column. To the right of the leading entry in the uh, of the row above it, see. To the right, to the right. <coughs> And third property says all the entries in a column below the leading entry R zeros. This is the leading entry below the R zeros. This is the leading entry below the R zeros. So there are no entries here. So this <coughs> this is the echelon form. Okay. Then similarly, <coughs> I. Another example you can give: one, two, zero, zero, minus one, uh, minus four, two, zero, zero. <coughs> This is also in the echelon form. Right? So leading entry in the second row is to the right of the leading entry in the first row. Similarly, leading entry in the third row is to the right of the leading entry in the second row. All elements in the column below the leading entry are zeros. See, there is a leading entry in this column are zeros. Leading entry in this column are zeros. So there are no entries here. So we stop here. So these two are in the column form. Are in the column form. Are in the column form. So after reducing it to the column form. We count the number of non-zero rows. This is a non-zero row. At least, at least one entry is not equal to zero. Then that row is called a non-zero. So there are three non-zero rows here. One, two, three. So rank of that particular matrix is three. And similarly, here also rank is three. Now, now with this definition, let me take the examples. So finding the rank of a matrix from the examination point is very important. There will be one subdivision. Okay. Okay. So this is very simple. Determine the rank of the matrix. 
but in particular I want to, since I want to make this zero, I will subtract with this. So I will write, now R3 will change with <coughs> R3 minus 2R1, R3 minus 2R1. So I get equivalent matrix which preserves the order. Again it will be a 3 by 3 matrix and it preserves the rank also. So now row 1, R1 is being used to make changes in R2 and R3. So R1 is not changed. So that I will write uh, blindly. So no change in row 1. No change in row 1. Row 1 is being used to make changes in R2 and R3. Row 2 and row 3. So now you just see R2 will change now with R2 minus R1. Eh? With this calculation, R2 minus R1 is component wise. Eh? You cannot subtract 4 with 1. <coughs> Corresponding elements only should be added. Corresponding elements only should be uh, subtracted. So 1, 1, minus 1, 0, 4, minus 2, 4 minus 2 is 2, 2 minus 3, 2 minus 3 is minus 1. Similarly, <coughs> oh, this is clear. Right? Now, I am multiplying this by 2. R3 will change with R3 minus 2 R times R1. R3 is 2. And to make this 2, I am multiplying by 2. So, 2 minus 2, 0. 2 minus 2, 0. 6 minus 4. 6 minus 4 is 2. Then 5 minus 6. Minus 1. <coughs> For example, just see here how R3 is changing. Eh? R3 is changing. How? <coughs> R3 to minus 2 times R1. 2 into minus 2, 0. So this element is 0. Similarly, uh, 6, R3, 6 minus 2 times corresponding element. So this is 6 minus 4 is equal to 2. This is the 2. Then uh, 5 minus 2 times R1, 3. 3. So 5 minus 6 is minus 4. So this is minus 4. So you can calculate like this. Uh, <coughs> very simple. You can mentally do it. Find it difficult, you can use calculator. Not difficult. Now, this is still not in a grand form because you see, this is a leading entry, 5, to the right of the leading entry in the previous row, above it, 5. But element below the leading entry should also be 0. Leading entry is 1, all the elements are 0. Next row leading entry is 2, but there is one element here which is not equal to 0. So I have to make this 2 also equal to 0 using again elementary transformation. So this is equivalent to, now R1 is fine. <coughs> you should not disturb the R1. Below the leading entry of the row 1, all zeros. Fine. It is exactly R1. So we should not touch that. Only we have to handle R3 with R2 only. Okay. So now they are both are same. R2 and R3 are same. So just to subtract R3 with R2. So this is equivalent to R3. Uh, R3 will change subject to this operation. R3, uh, both are same with the signs also. R3 minus R2. So now R2 is being used to make changes in R3. So R2 is not at all changed. It will remain as it is. So first row, we are not at all disturbing. 1, 2, 3. Second row, we are using it, so we don't make any changes here. Then, <coughs> with this operation, R3 minus R2, we are absorbing some changes in R3. That is very simple, you don't have to calculate. 0 minus 0, 0. 2 minus 2, 
zero. Minus one, minus half, minus half. This minus one plus one, zero. Okay. <coughs> now just look at this. This is the leading entry. All the elements below the leading entry zero. In the next row, the leading entry is to the right of the leading entry in the row above it. That is also fine. Uh, below that leading entry, all elements are zero. So this is the echelon form. Uh, there are no other leading entry in the third row. All are zero. This is perfect if in the echelon form, <coughs> which is in the echelon. So I am simply writing here echelon. Echelon. So now count the number of rows in the echelon form. Uh, Non-zero rows. This is zero row minus this zero row. Non-zero row one. Non-zero row two. One two. So rank of the matrix is two. <coughs> Let me consider another problem. Problem number two. Determine the rank of a matrix. Zero, one, minus three, minus one, one zero one one, one zero one. One, three one zero two, three one zero two, one one minus two, one one minus two zero. Elementary row transformations. Okay. So now 
<coughs> there is a zero in the leading entry is zero in the first one first column as per the agron forum <coughs> properties that has to be pushed to the bottom level so we shall interchange so this is row 1 so we call it as r1 so this is row 2 we call it as r2 row 3 we call it as r3 row 4 we call it as r4 so there are four rows and four columns so this is a 4 by 4 bed 4 by 4 bed square bed square bed now i want to push this row to the bottom level <coughs> so what i do i interchange r1 and r4 Uh, as a first step, so this is equivalent to. So for interchanging R1 and any two rows, so this is a symbol to be used. Interchange R1 and R4. You get an equivalent matrix, preserving the same order and the same rank. So now my first row will be fourth row. One one minus two zero. One one minus two. Zero. Then second row will remain as it is. One zero one one. Third row will remain as it is. Three one zero two. Fourth row will become zero one minus three minus. This is the equivalent matrix we have obtained by interchanging. By interchanging R1 and R4. <coughs> Now, and again use this leading one to make these two zero because this entry is already zero. Let us not touch this R4. Let us concentrate only on this one and three, which is present in the below the leading entry in the first row, in the second and third. So, what is the operation I can use? <coughs> R2 minus R1. Very simple. Now this is three, so I multiply three by R one, and then subtract with this three. So I use row one, R one, R one to make changes in R two and R. That means to make these two entries zero. So this is not changed. So this is equal to <coughs> the first operation is. So now R two is going to be changed with the operation R two. Minus R one, R two minus R one. Then R three will also change with the <coughs> operation R three minus three times R one. R three minus three times R one. Okay. Let us see the changes here. Let us see the changes. R one is being used to make changes in R two and R three. So therefore, R one is unchanged. So no change in R one. <coughs> one one minus two and zero and zero. <coughs> one minus one zero. Very simple. One minus one zero. Zero minus one. So minus one. <coughs> one minus of minus two. That is one plus two. So three. Ah, uh, one minus zero. That is one only. So zero minus one. Three one. <coughs> Now, how to make this zero? As with 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 respect to this operation, R three. What is R three? Three. So I will make uh, simplification here. R three is three now. So minus three times R one. Corresponding R one is one. So three minus three is zero. So zero. Okay. Let me do this. Now. <coughs> One next element one minus three times R one one so one minus three minus two so right minus two uh, the next element is zero zero minus three times R one R one is minus two so this is zero plus six this is six uh, remember this. Next element is two minus three times R one. Corresponding element is zero. Two minus zero is two. Okay, this we are not disturbing because already this element is zero. So write zero. 
uh, 1 minus 3 minus 1. But this is not in the graph form. <coughs> the leading entry in the second row is exactly to the right of the leading entry in the previous row, above it, 5. But the elements below that leading entry is not equal to 0. So I have to concentrate on making these two elements 0. This is very simple because there is one here and row 1 is unchanged. Here we should not disturb this. So multiply R2 by 2 and subtract with this element, this will become 0. And simply add these two, it will become 0. So this is further equivalent to <coughs> R3 will change now. Subject to the operation R3 uh, minus 2 times R2. Then simply adding R4 also will change. Subject to the operation R4 plus R2. R4, R4 plus R2. So you get equivalent matrix. The first row is a total touch. So it is perfectly alright. So don't disturb this one. Row 2 is being used, so there is no change in the row 2 also. Minus 3, uh, minus 1, 3, and 1, then 0. <coughs> because there is already 0, so nothing happens to this element. Divide as 0. Now, minus 2, R2, minus 2, minus uh, 2 times, 2 times R2. Right? Now, we will do this operation. Uh, let us see, R3 is minus 2 now, because this is already 0, I have written 0 here. Minus 2, uh, minus 2 times R1 is minus 1, minus 2 plus 2 is 0. So, minus 2 plus 2 is 0. <coughs> the next element is 6, uh, minus 2 times R2, corresponding element R2 is 3, so 6 minus 6 is 0. 6 minus 6 is 0. Then, uh, next element is 2 minus 2 times R2 uh, 1. Uh, R2 is 1. 2 minus 2 is 0. So, this element is also 0. Now, just answer. <coughs> we are simply adding. Uh, we are simply adding R4 plus R2. R4 plus R2. 1 minus 1, 0. 3 minus 3, 0. Uh, okay, so uh, 1 minus 1, 0. 3 minus 3, 0. 1 minus 1, 0. So I get 2, 0 rows. This is perfectly taken on for. This is taken on for. Taken on for. <coughs> so, number of non zero rows 1, 2, 2, 1, 2. So, rank of this matrix is 2. So, rank of A, rank of A is equal to number of number of non zero rows, non zero rows uh, of A. In this second alpha, this is very important. In this echelon form, echelon, echelon form. Hmm? So therefore, rank of A is 2. So therefore, even if you don't write this statement, that is fine. But if you write this one, it is enough. So rank of A is 2. <coughs> okay. Okay, I'll stop here. I'll continue in my next class.